Yo, what's going on, Planet S1 family? It's your main man, JD. Thank you for tuning in. This is Drinks with JD. Learning to process it, mm -hmm. you know, um, the way we, you know, everybody is different. You know, I can't tell you how to do it, mm -hmm. but I needed to be able to process that, that pain. Exactly. And I remember uh, there was this older gentleman that told me I needed to forgive her. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's not that's gonna not going to happen. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. For this sure. is this the second this is the second time that yeah. you know and we were still married but you know I was you know in my mind you know still trying to work things out but you know she had moved on sure. so he said as long as you hold on to that animosity mm -hmm. well first he said she's not your wife anymore and I was looking at him like I was ready to hit him but I knew better mm -hmm. uh, he said she belongs to someone else mm -hmm. and that's something you're just gonna have to accept he said but if you don't forgive her Anything that she does will cause you to respond. Mm -hmm. You need to forgive her, not necessarily because she needs to be forgiven, but so that you can be forgiven, exactly. so that you can be free of the reaction, of the, of, of, of the control mm -hmm. that's taking place. You hear about her at a family reunion, you hear about, you know, you're not getting any letters, and everything that you hear that she's not doing for you makes you respond a certain way. Mm -hmm. So forgive her. So you can be free. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. And it didn't happen overnight. For sure. That because did. it's the process. Right. It was a process. First of all, how you're processing it. And right. also the process to get to the end. And I think those were probably some of the most beautiful songs that I've ever written. Mm. Even though I have one that's called, I'm Still Hating You. Mm. But it's a beautiful love song because I'm saying... I'm still hating you, not because you ignored my cry for help. I'm still hating you because you gave up on yourself. And when um, you gave up on me, you gave up on yourself. Wow. You gave up on us. But, you know, there are many, many, you know, uh, arguments that can be said there because, well, you're sitting behind bars, mm -hmm. you know, so you left her. Of course. So. Different perspective. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know. So like, what's her perspective? Right. Versus what's yours? You know, I take my hat off. I salute mm -hmm. the ladies that <laughs> stand by their man uh, as long as they can, or indefinitely when they're incarcerated. It's a it's a powerful thing. And and from my time behind bars, I created love letters. Um, you know, I said that I would write to individuals who I don't know, mm -hmm. just send letters into per perfect strangers to let them know that somebody on the outside is thinking about you wow. because you go through day in and day out and you don't hear your name in the mail. It affects you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so um, hats off to you ladies and men that are looking out. Uh, but uh, there's two sides to every story. For so, sure. you know, sure. sometimes separation is what's needed that's amazing that you met a mentor in there yeah you know because we all well as men all right we need those mentors yes. to guide us yes to guide us and, and help us learn and and help us get from boyhood to manhood you know and and in in while learning forgiveness mm -hmm. that's real manhood let's say yeah. Just yeah for this example yeah you know i'm sure that you hated this person yes. at, at a certain moment in your life. Yes. And that just, it consumed you. Yes. You know, but I'm, I'm obviously, I'm pretty sure now, right. you know, after learning from your mentor and, and processing everything, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could tell me that you love that person. Yes. Who, who you used to hate. Yeah, we're the best of friends. And, and but yet right. you feel so free. Right. I feel right? free. We're... She stays right down the street from me. Yeah. We're not intimate, but we're the best of friends to this day. Mm -hmm. um, we raised, you know, our kids are grown now. But, you know, of course, you know, mm -hmm. there's a period of time where you're thinking to yourself, I can't wait to get out of here so I can handle some business. Of course, of course. But, you know, time heals all wounds. Mm -hmm. And I channeled mine through writing. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't tell you was when that old man got to me, 
I'm standing at the top of the stairs, wow. getting ready to jump down. I'm thinking about committing suicide. I'm like, all I got to do is just jump and land on my head, and it's over with. That's I probably. ain't got to deal with this, you yes, know? Yes. So he had enough vision to see that, too. He's like, hey, what over here? What's going mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I broke down and I cried because the reality is you don't know how you're going to respond to something like that until it happens. Of course. You know? Of course. But uh, I uh, was able to, again, you know, one thing that um, was orchestrated for me, being a young man at that time, I said, you need some time, you need some time to yourself. Mm -hmm. What you don't need is to be uh, around a whole bunch of people. So just go to your cell, lock yourself in there, and take some time to yourself. Get off this floor, get off this day room floor, and, you know, focus on, on yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Those were, those were trying times. You know, one thing that's fascinating about your skill and your talent, mm -hmm. how you could sit there and write and you could display it and people could hear it, yes. you know, or also visually see it, right. you know, because they could read it themselves. And that could help them process the same thing that you already processed. And then they are able to process it because of you, because of your talent. Right. In, in music, I'm able to do that. I'm able to convey that through lyrics. And then each person is going to hear it differently. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to hear what I'm saying in a song differently. Exactly. They're going to hear what they need to hear. Now, do you think that your music can change a person's point of view of how they see the world? Absolutely. Um... And I say that because I write a lot of, you know, contemporary Christian music. Mm -hmm. There's a piece, I say, did your wife make you breakfast? Mm -hmm. Did you roll out of bed? Did you find a jacket to cover your head? Well, I woke up under a tree. What about this Jesus you told me about? Mm -hmm. The one you said walked on the sea. Is he too busy? Is he still around? Mm -hmm. Does he give a damn about me? Mm -hmm. So they resonate. That resonates with them because... I'm not taking the side of just the average. I'm letting you know that um, when I see you, I'm not going to walk past you. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to stand over you. I'm going to sit on the ground with you, and we're going we're gonna to chop it up. And if there's something that you need, I'm going to meet the need and not say be warmed and be filled and, you know, and get in my car and bounce. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not always a monetary thing. Sometimes people just need to be listen to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just want to be heard. Sometimes they do want that dollar. And I'm not going to tell you not to go buy a beer because that might be exactly what you're getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. What you do with what I give you is your, you know, that's, that's up to you. But I'm going to give it to you out of the spirit of love and then you, you figure it out. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, we're speaking also right now about community, right? Mm -hmm. About different people. Right. Now, uh, given the climate of the world today, mm -hmm. uh, what's your response to the BLM movement? Mm 